Welcome to Downtown Sports. My name is Downtown Stephen Brown. And in today's video, guys, I want to go over some Maple Leafs related news and notes, talk about some players who are still injured, talk about some other players who are getting closer to returning from injury and what that may mean for the team and go over some lineup changes and discuss some other things as well. First up, Peter Morazic looks like he's getting closer to getting back into games with the Toronto Maple Leafs, and it looks like they're going to try to get him into some games with the Marlies this weekend in what is, I guess, a long-term injury reserve conditioning stint. And we talked about Peter Morazic a couple of days ago, and maybe it's my fault for just talking about him for about a minute or so, and adding it in towards the end of the video was sort of a throwaway thing because I didn't want to make the video too, too long, and maybe I need to do a better job at getting a sense of the pulse of what you guys feel, because I know how... I'm thinking and how I'm feeling towards certain things, but when I sit down to record these videos, it's just me talking to the camera. So I'm going to start doing more polls like this either on Twitter or on the YouTube community tab and would appreciate your guys' feedback because it would make making these videos a lot easier. But with this poll getting as many votes as it did and with it being split the way that it is, I think that it's a valid conversation and it's a valid talking point to discuss both sides. And the people who feel that way, the sense that I got is that it's not even about ripping on Peter Morazic. He hasn't even played two games worth of ice time. I completely understand it. You look at the list of names who the Maple Leafs could have signed other than Morazic from this summer, and you see guys like James Reimer, uh, Laurent Brassois, Antti Ranta, Frederick Anderson even, although... <laughs> can't explain that one. Because if we go back and look at the video that I did in the summer going over all of the options that the Maple Leafs had available to them in free agency in terms of the goalies that were available, since the 1920 season, out of all the goalies on this list, Peter Mrazek had played in the fifth most games, and he had the second highest goal save above expected metric. Because if we're looking at the context of what goes into that stat, there are only four goalies on this list out of the 12 who faced a higher volume of high danger shots against per 60 than Peter Morazic, and only three of them who saved them at a better rate. James Reimer would have been a cool and weird option because he'd be coming back to the Toronto Maple Leafs, but looking at the contextual stats here, Reimer over the last couple of years has been a guy who doesn't necessarily steal you any games, but he's not going to cost you any games. And if you value that from your backup goalie, then maybe James Reimer was your guy. And I said as much in this video, it's going to depend on what you value from the position. Do you want boom or bust? Because if you're looking for that high ceiling potential, then Peter Mrazek was your guy. If you're just looking for someone steady who's going to do a decent bang-up job, James Reimer is maybe your guy. If you're looking for a cheaper veteran option, then maybe Yaroslav Halak can be that guy. But also the concern with him was going into this year, we didn't know that Jack Campbell could carry the workload that he has so far. And I don't necessarily think the team wants to put that on him. And I don't think that Yaroslav Halak at his age and at this point in his career can be relied upon to play 30 plus games. Maybe I'm wrong there, but I think that he's probably more comfortable between 20 and 25. And this is jumping ahead and assuming a couple of things, but looking at the Maple Leafs' salary cap situation going into this offseason, the salary cap is projected to go up by maybe a million dollars. Phil Kessel's $1.2 million comes off the books. Okay, there's a little bit more breathing room there, but even if you're giving a guy like Jack Campbell, let's say, $4.5 million over three seasons, and we did an entire video looking at what that contract could look like and why, and I'll leave that linked above the screen, and at the end of this video here... You still have some key players to re-sign. Guys like Timothy Lilligren, guys like Rasmus Sandin, guys like Andre Kasha. This is also assuming that Nick Robertson takes a step. And this is also moving guys like Justin Hall and Nick Ritchie out. You can see how tight things are. That $5.6 million, I don't know, maybe that's enough to comfortably get um, the RFAs signed. And Kasha is an RFA and with Lilligren and Sandin, but... You'd still need two more guys, and that'd be stretching it a little bit also. So I could definitely see the argument there that at $3.8 million, you know, maybe you'd want to give more of an opportunity to a guy like a Joseph Wall or explore other avenues because Peter Morazic has proven so far this year and last year that he can't really stay healthy, and the team needs someone to play games. They need someone to play games at least that not be catastrophically bad. And Joseph Wall has met that criteria in the 
50 games that he's played so far, but it's it's hope. It's hope, right? It's justification to maybe throw him back in there. And with the way that the salary cap situation is shaping up right now, when Peter Morazic returns from injury and when Ilya Mikheyev comes back from injury, there's not going to be any sort of cap space to carry three goalies on the roster. So the Maple Leafs aren't going to get the opportunity to play Joseph Wall in more games. And that's disappointing because I'd like to see more from the young man. Um, some spectacular performances over his last two games played. Um, but I think that we need to give Peter Morazic the rest of this season to kind of decide what he is, and we will revisit it at the end of this year. And maybe we put him on the list with guys like Justin Hall and Nick Ritchie to say that these guys are expendable um, for the sake of cap space. That's kind of the full scope of that conversation. But moving on here, we can see that Andre Kasha wearing a gray sweater in practice is not going to play tonight against the Colorado Avalanche and hasn't played the last couple of games. And the sense that I'm sort of getting from this is that the injury isn't too serious and he could play if they absolutely needed him to. But at this point, December 1st, there's no real reason to rush him. And the Maple Leafs are absolutely on fire right now, winning 13 of their last 15 games, being, I believe, tied for first in the Atlantic Division. I'm sure we'll talk about the standings a little bit later on. There's no reason. If he's not 100%, um, baby it. Baby it because he's an integral, important piece to this team. And another reason why I'm willing to give Andre Kasha some more time is because I really want to see what the Maple Leafs have in a guy like Joey Anderson. Because if he's able to play well, over this little time period between when Andre Kasha and Ilya Mikheyev are injured, he's able to throw himself into the pot of names that the Maple Leafs can seriously consider this upcoming offseason to be on the team, especially because he's making league minimum. Joey Anderson, of course, being the lone piece that the Maple Leafs acquired in the Andre Janssen trade is nothing to scoff at. He's 23 years old at this point. He's six feet tall, 207 pounds. I believe he captained the U.S. World Junior Championship team a couple of seasons ago that I believe won gold in Buffalo against Team Canada. He's played 50 or so games at the NHL level to this point and done reasonably well. He's been an important piece for the Toronto Marlies the last couple of seasons. If he can play well in the opportunity that he has while Andre Kasha and Ilya Mikheyev continue to be out of the lineup, that would be massive, especially because he makes league minimum 750 grand. He's still signed uh, for next season, and we saw how tight things are going to be if Joey Anderson can throw himself as a serious name into that conversation. Um, that'd be awesome. That'd be really, really big for the Toronto Maple Leafs. And if we're looking at the Colorado side for tonight's game, Nathan McKinnon does draw back into the lineup for this one. His first game back from injury, and Nazem Kadri is on absolute fire. And if you want to know how I feel about that, that is a Nazem Kadri game worn jersey in the background there. So um, hopefully tonight goes well because it's a game against the team who hasn't gotten the greatest goaltending so far this year from Darcy Kemper. Uh, but. They're a very good team. They're a very good team. It's going to be a really good test. The Maple Leafs, who have won 13 out of their last 15 games. And this was just announced as I was recording the video. It's unfortunate because he played really well with the Toronto Marlies. I don't think that we saw his full potential at the NHL level. And this may be a guy who signs with another NHL team and gets a larger opportunity like Alexander Barabanov did um, after the Maple Leafs traded him to the Sharks. That's a key difference there, um, and plays well. He may, or he may go back to Russia. This is the Maple Leafs and Kyle Dubas fulfilling their promise to European players who are willing to sign here. Hey, if we can't find a spot for you, we are not going to bury you. We will um, let you go. We will allow you to move on if you feel that that is best for you, which I respect. You have to at least respect that. And I'm not too worried about the forward depth because when Ilya Mikheyev comes back, there is a plethora of guys who the Leafs have to be the 13th forward. Maybe a guy like Pierre Engvall gets bumped down to that spot. A guy like Kyle Clifford, a guy like Anderson, who's getting an opportunity tonight. And even Alex Steves that's playing for the Toronto Marlies. And he's doing really well. He would need a contract, but Josh Hosang could be another name who you can add to that. Nick Robertson, when he comes back from injury, he can be another name who you can throw in there. There are a lot of guys that the Leafs have. 
Aside from the first week or two of the regular season, I haven't really talked about the star players on this team very much, and they've been excellent. Um, so maybe I should highlight that a little bit more, because guys like John Tavares are absolutely on fire. Guys like William Nylander, yeah, maybe there's a game here and there where you'd like more from him, but I feel like he's been one of their most consistent forwards this year. Mitch Marner is showing you over this last little stretch that he can beat you with his skill, but he also has that compete level that a lot of people fell in love with him over. And once Austin Matthews, because this is not going to last, once he starts shooting closer to his career shooting percentage, I don't really know. Is there um, a level above where the team is right now? Obviously, as a team, you're going to go through stretches where maybe you got a couple of guys banged up. Maybe a couple of guys, it's just not their night. Maybe uh, you're playing on the road and the other team is really hard matching one of your top lines. But the Maple Leafs have enough star power to be able to pass the torch around. And we've seen over this stretch where they've won 13 out of their last 15 games that they can do it in multiple ways. They can grind out games. They can give you a full 60 minutes. They can shut teams out. They can uh, play the Harlem Globetrotter offensive style when they do have the time and space available to them. When does this team come down from this high? Is a legitimate question you can ask. I don't know. When does Austin Matthews come up from this low? And if he does, does the team ever bottom out? Do they cool off? I don't know. I don't know. It's, I don't know how to feel about this team right now, given the last couple of seasons and what we're seeing from them right now. They are legitimately playing the best hockey that we have seen them play <laughs> over the course of the last couple of seasons. There are more things that I would like to discuss in this video, but I'll leave you guys with that. Let me know what your thoughts are down in the comment section down below and make sure to like the video if you did like it and subscribe for more because more is always on the way and I guess I'll see you guys on the weekend.